Nowadays, there is just so much advice on the internet about nutrition. You know, some people are telling you to not eat eggs. I never some people are telling you that oatmeal is unhealthy. Oatmeal. Vegetables are unhealthy. Don't. Fruit is making you fat, fruit makes you fat. and Stop that's just garbage. Protein, um, meat, and some of those people telling you those things are nutritionists or they're cardiologists. You know, they're smart people um, with high education degrees. Um, but it doesn't matter what those people have to say right now. Just ignore that. Let's look at some of the top performing endurance athletes in the world and to see what they eat, because clearly they've got to be doing something right. So the first athlete we're gonna be looking at is the king, the goat of all goats, Petr Nortug. Um, if you don't know who he is, he is a cross country skier. He's, he's won a total of 13 world championships, I think. So let's, let's look at what he has to say. I'm drinking wine, I'm eating chips. Okay, um, I think we could ignore what Petr has to say. If you know anything about his personality, he's just a total anomaly. Um, so let's move on. Let's look at another cross country skier, uh, Martin Sundby, also very decorative. Han tror han er lege, han tror han er fysioterapeut, han prøver å ta over jobben min, han tror han har lest all den forskningen jeg har lest plutselig. Jeg kan ikke høre på deg! Han konkluderte med at han kan ikke høre på deg! Du skal jo sitte og spise cottage cheese, saffegrinn og kjøre litt da, gå jeg til en halv runde her, og så er jeg kontrollert lege her under 30 år. Skal du aldri være elektriker, han er han er han ikke er astronaut, altså han er den dummeste jeg har vet om i livet, det er folk som skal gi kostholdstips, som ikke har peiling på hva det handler om å prestere på verdensnivå. Og her, rislunsj, melkeveien, flate. Hva er det som skjer her? Godt og blandet, fy faen godt og blandet. Og godt og blandet. Tenk deg når det ligger en sånn i bilen, ja. Vi kunne ligge på et hotellrom, og han spiste sin kveldsmat med noe cottage cheese, og noe korn og havregryn, og så spiste jeg en pose fra Candy King ved siden av. Toloski er jo bygd på Haribo. Det er jo de gangene jeg har vunnet Toloski, så jeg spiste jo horribelig mengde med Haribo. Men det er jo bare fordi at akkurat i en sånn situasjon så er det salatbladet betyr ingenting når jeg skal gå og makse i ti dager. Eller de paprikaene, eller de agurkene, eller på en måte. Så den brokkolien får hjelper ikke meg til å gå fortere i den slanebakken, men den haribåen øker sukkeropptaket mitt over en kort periode. Så må jeg tenke på nytt igjen når jeg er ferdig der, men jeg har likevel ganske avslått. So that was pretty interesting. I think I've lost all faith in cross country skiers. Um, I think it's time to move on to a different sport. Let's move on to running. Um, and let's look at Jakob Ingebrigtsen, another Norwegian and summer Olympics are coming up. So clearly he's uh, adjusting his diet and um, yeah, like eating healthy. So let's see what he has to say. Let's research it. So Jakob said on Swedish television that he ate six slices of bread covered with Nutella daily for lunch for 10 years straight. And he also pointed out that... So Jakob Ingebrigtsen says that nutrition doesn't really matter. Wow, I mean, who am I to criticize him? I'm nowhere near among the best endurance athletes in the world, you know? And maybe these elite endurance athletes are actually onto something. Maybe this diet is actually best suited for them and is the best for them. Now there's got to be some professional endurance athletes out there that care somewhat about their diet. Now let's look at the Kenyans. Certainly they will be eating healthy at least. You know they've got some of the best long distance runners in the world. So let's see what they have to say. The food is always healthy, it's always natural, it has impact on the recovery. 
they eat lots of vegetables. Once in a while they eat meat, but meat is a kind of a luxury. They eat beans, rice, ugali, which is just boiled cornmeal, you would say. So that's exactly what I would expect from some of the best endurance athletes in the world. Everything seems to be healthy and natural. Now, let's look at another runner named Mo Farah. I'll stay away from fatty food and food that, you know, has been fried, grease. Because um, you've got to look after your body. You can eat all of that, but it's going to be harder for you to burn off later on. You know, in between, we'll have like chicken, salmon, and uh, my, one of my favorite and easy ones, spaghetti, spaghetti one is just easy to make. We like the combination of different things, so I like to be able to get nice protein and nice carbs. Interesting. So I'm starting to think eating unhealthy as an athlete is just a Norwegian thing. But any anyways, we are going to move on to one of the most famous swimmers in the world, and he is Michael Phelps. I always looked at my body as a car. You know, as, and as, as a high-performance car, you obviously want the best fuel going into that car that's going to help you perform your best. So that's just what I did. And, and you know, I think you went from the 12,000 the 12, calorie diet that everyone wrote about that don't believe everything you read. Um, you weren't eating a pound of pasta every night? No, it's, I mean, the stories were just ridiculous. Uh, I mean, I was probably eating anywhere between like 8 and 10, probably at my peak where I was really growing. But still, that's, it, it, be, it became a job. Right. So, Michael Phelps relates himself to a high-performance car, and he only eats good quality food. He eats a lot, but that doesn't mean it's unhealthy. He just eats a lot because he, he needs the energy. He burns so many calories. Now, there's a lot of rumors out there that Michael Phelps, all he eats is junk and McDonald's, but he said it himself, don't believe everything you hear on the internet. So I made this video, one, for entertainment, but two, to just show everyone the controversy between the different opinions about nutrition. And I'm not saying that I agree or disagree with both opinions, but I will say one thing. I would much rather be 10% overweight than 1% underweight. And that's especially true in the off season when you're not racing. Um, when you're, if you're not getting enough calories in, you simply just, you don't have the energy to go out and train. And if you don't have the energy to go out and train, you're, you're not gonna be better, so. Personally, as long as you are eating enough, that is my number one tip. Um, the rest is up for you to decide. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and more to come soon. Hit that subscribe button. See you soon. Peace out.